Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Peter Hun, and thank you for joining the channel. I have a new review for a drawing tool that I just received in the mail recently, and it's been a tool that I've been eyeing for quite a bit now. I finally pulled the trigger and decided to get one, and uh, I have one next to me at the moment I'm going to show you guys in a second. But this is also kind of in tune with a lot of things I've been talking about with, in terms of the like, drawing materials. And people do ask a lot about you know the kind of pens that I go for and use, and obviously we have an assortment of pens as options here that we can draw with. And typically when I sketch and draw with ink, and ink uh, drawings are things that I use mainly for the classes that I teach, these are kind of the standard tools that we tend to use. You know, this is a Stendler pigment liner. Uh, this one is the Fabri-Castell. We have a couple of uh, permanent tools like the Sharpie or Stabilo. And of course the Arteza brand as well here too. And these are felt tip pens that we would normally sketch with. Now ballpoint, a little bit different in terms of construction. Uh, we have fountain pens as well too. Now. These kind of pens were the pens that we started with in the classes, uh, which I favored quite a bit, and they were standardized towards the um, how the instructors would kind of approach towards the methods of applying the material. And um, pens like these for the class are typically built so that we are more committed to the line work to build confidence, but also to go through many iterations of the sketches, producing lines that are consistent, and uh, also potentially doing more technical drawings. Now, as a quick sketching tool technique, some of these kind of tool sets can be a little bit more uh, intimidating for some people because uh, the line you're putting down is very obviously permanent and uh, it can be a bit scary to approach a white piece of paper with a line. Now, most of these pens are constructed in the same way. We do have a nib with a felt um, internal component, which is filled with ink. And so as the, essentially the nib, as a straw draws from that, is able to produce and put down the line. Uh, some of these work better than others in terms of angle and orientation, speed and movement, and also ink quality. These two particular pens on the left are going to be more of your um, standardized you know, sketching pens. Stabilo is definitely something more for a universal uh, surface approach where you want to draw or write on things like plastic or uh, paper, of course, even you know, any other surface you want to go for, uh, much like the Sharpie. The Arteza brand is, is another fine liner, but the ink over here is not waterproof, so it does bleed and run a little bit if you use markers and watercolors and such like that. So each one of these do have benefits and cons. Now the biggest con for me was that these pens uh, were off the shelf. And so they're one time use, you could use them to the point when they're dead, and you throw them out. And all these pens kind of had that same problem. Now the issue is that these kinds of pens can't be recycled. Uh, you can't you know, send them back to a company, uh, they may not be able to reuse them, uh, they don't refill them, most people just throw them out. Now, of course, you know, I was trying to get away from this mainly because after 10 years of instructing, the amount of pens I would have gone through and also the amount of cost I was spending because each one of these pens are 3 to $4 US, uh, maybe more or less depending on where you're coming from. So the amount of money I've been kind of putting into these tools over the many years has been, um, again, quite high and also going down the trash. So afterwards, I started moving into more of fountain pens, and I found fountain pens to be very favorable mainly because... Uh, I did find them to be um, obviously high in quality, especially in the brands that you would go for. The cost ratio for most people would seem to be kind of like out of their comfort zones, but you have to also bring in the context of how much money you're spending on these kinds of felt tip pens. You know, a fountain pen like this one over here would definitely range within a couple hundred dollars, uh, but the fact that I can take care of this and reuse it and put some care into the actual material uh, could last a lifetime. And it produces the same kind of quality. It uses certain inks that obviously I would go for. And I know there's a cumbersome nature to them in terms of having the constant refill. And if it doesn't have ink in it, you can't use it. Uh, but of course, the fact is that these can be like uh, lifelong partners. Now, of course, there are much more affordable fountain pens. And um, like I said, I, I'm more of a collector. So I did like to go for different brands and different collections and selections of, of tools. And so I found the, fair, felt, uh, I'm sorry, the fountain pens to be very, very favorable. However, I still missed the nibs and the softness of the felt tip pens as well too. Uh, depending on the customizations that you get with the fountain pens, you could get a lot of flex within them. However, they can be a little bit less forgiving based on some of the angles and directions of the pens you move them with. Uh, so I'm, I'm still looking for certain pens that can benefit maybe from both worlds, the fountain pen and the felt tip pen. Now there was another tool uh, that's created by Copic. <clears throat> the Copic Motel Liner is a, is a great tool that I found to be quite useful. And uh, let me grab that real quickly. And this is that particular pen, the Copic Multi-Liner SP. Uh, it also has these multi-packs, which kind of gives you the ink refill cartridge, the spare nibs, coming in multiple sizes. I got the 0.5 to use. 
Now these pens have also been around for quite some time and um, I was very curious about them. Got them recently, wanted to try them out because of course you are able to place the back end uh, cartridge back over here. This part falls out. Obviously you have the felt liner inside here, <clears throat> inside here which then fills in with ink. The front end nib can also been, then be uh, removed. I have to clip up here the metal. Uh, and then you would use one of these to replace them with. Sprays a bit of ink around there. So actually with this one, I've been able to refill it on my own. So using different kinds of inks as well too. A slight bypass instead of reusing. And that's been one of the problems of this multi-liner is that uh, as much as this one is replaceable to some of the parts and pieces and holding onto the same pen, all you're really keeping is just the casing. And the casing is cool. But if I'm replacing the nib and also the ink cartridge, essentially what I'm doing is still getting one of these. This is not as much expensive compared to some of the other pens. Uh, it has a little bit more of a higher price point, but of course the benefit of being able to replace these parts and pieces. But again, at the same time, it's when you look past uh, just the fact that you just have the casing, you're still getting rid of the entire pen entirely. Now I found a way to be able to refill these ink cartridges using fountain pen inks. Uh, using syringes and stuff like that and to keep it going so it still does work eventually of course I will I will have to remove and replace the nib because that nib with more time and use does begin to grind away and it shapes the uh, nib differently potentially I'll be able to maybe clip it maybe even adjust the length of this and maybe reshape and form uh, the nib but that's a lot of work so I may not actually go for that route but I did want to try it I do like the pen and I actually do like um, in terms of the functionality of things within it it's a really good quality build but I kept wanting to look for more alternatives where I didn't necessarily have to have that ink cartridge. This piece of paper over. This is where then the Euchre's pen comes in. Euchre's was a brand that I found, um, I think sometime last year in the summer. I found their Instagram, Euchre's, and they're an Asian company. And I do... Um, was interested. I was actually very interested in seeing how good their product was. Now I had seen it sometime late, uh, mid last year, and I kind of kept watching, you know, what was going on as they're posting some other content. Uh, maybe there were some notable people or friends that had been using this, but I didn't find anyone that I know that actually applied and used this tool for their own sketching and drawing. So I was curious, and eventually I said, you know what, I'm just going to give this a try. So I decided to actually go in there and uh, purchase one of their baseline pens, and uh, this is the company of Euchre's. I also bought one of their spare nibs, which is a different size format. This is a 1.4, this is a 1.0, and then their actual ink as well too, because I want to test out the ink quality and if it holds up in terms of waterproofing. So as the base model, I wanted to make sure uh, it was the cheapest price point, and so that people that were looking for these kinds of pens wouldn't be spending an arm and a leg for something like this. So um, beyond that, I just wanted to see the build quality and of course how the line work works. So the particular model that I bought was the Youth Range Euchre's pen, and this one in particular costs uh, I would say about nine, yeah, it was about nineteen dollars, and uh, this is in the U.S. This is the one point oh fine millimeter, one point oh. This is the tip that came with, and uh, this was the black lacquer felt tip pen. Uh, the model number of this one was five nine one. I also then purchased the converter that was supposed to come with the pen, and this did not come packaged inside the pen. It came separately in a plastic sleeve. Inside the pen actually came with one of these little cartridges. And the cartridge uh, is very similar to any other fountain pen cartridge as well too. Pretty standard size. I also then purchased another broad size nib, the 1.4. Uh, the converter was $3.30. The broad nib was $5 even. I also then purchased their ink, the Euchre's brand ink, the Onyx Black. Uh, this is a 30 milliliters and this is a $6.90, $1.90. All in US. Now this was shipped out uh, from Asia and I think the total cost was $39.20. So again, the amount I'm paying for the combination of all these things now determines upon your financial means of whether you can you know, want to spend that much or not. Now this is the baseline model. Uh, I would say it's probably the cheapest one they have there. They have a couple of other uh, lines as well, luxury lines and whatnot. Some of those can range upwards of $50 or more. So I opted not to get one of those in particular mainly because like I said, I wanted to get one that was potentially more um, consumer friendly for people that are out there for multiple age ranges and whatnot. 
So uh, I'm gonna open up this ink bottle as well too, just so we can get this out there. This is the ink bottle. Typically the kind of inks I use would be the Platinum Carbon Ink. Uh, I also have been using this Australian brand called Blackstone, which I also favor quite a bit. At some point in the future, I might also do an ink review of multiple different inks. Now I have yet to, re to fill this at all. Uh, I've opened up the packaging, I've been handling the pen, and just from off the bat, first impressions, is that you know this is the base model cheapest one you can find nineteen dollars and i would say the actual materials being used are very very standard so any manufacturer that's out there that produces these kind of products uh, is typically the kind of quality like this which is um, a very universal type these are all like stamped out the metal itself um, the casing on this is is very thin so it's lightweight but it does have a slight you know cheapness to it like some of the edges over here are kind of sharp um, Again, it does have a nice finish to it. It has a lacquer on top of this. But again, there's what I like about certain fountain pens, it does have a sense of a weight to it. Now, some people don't like weight to their pens. I kind of do it because it gives me a sense of response to it. The actual nib, uh, which is the only part that will probably stay very standard because as you upgrade to different types of pens of luxury, the casing will start to become more premium in terms of materials. But the actual plasticness of the nib is probably going to stay the same. And this is a very, I would say, low grade to medium quality uh, plastics. So it's super lightweight again, probably very brittle. Uh, you're not gonna wanna drop these kind of pens on high to solid ground. Uh, any kind of pen, honestly, would damage, you know, obviously, things like fountain pens as well too. The converter, very standard. Um, again, it securely fits in there to some degree. It, does, it still turns and um, is loose to a certain point. It does pop out fairly quickly too, so you have to watch out for that. You're going to want to make sure it's securely fastened into that part. Uh, there's really no ways you can adjust it. And based on what I'm seeing from down inside the pen, it's going to be the actual um, nib as it's being drawn through. Again, like a straw almost. So this is open-ended, and it gets saturated with the ink that's filled inside there. Now, I didn't receive any kind of packaging. Uh, it just kind of came in the mail within a plastic, you know, kind of baggie. So there was no box. Uh, there were no instructions. And um, I have to kind of figure out exactly how to fill this thing in there. But I'll replace it with this 1.4, which I'll also open up right now too. And hopefully that will give us, you know, uh, differences within of a, of a line, you know, variation that I'm looking for. And so the tips that we have right now, this is the 1.0, the 1.4. You'll see that it does have a pretty broad range of size from a 1.0 to 1.4. Now there are multiple sizes, but they did tell me uh, some other sizes were not in stock. So it took about, I would say a week and a half, two weeks but then to get them in stock. So it took about maybe a little bit less than a month to get the pen in, in, in house. Uh, I didn't mind in terms of waiting. I had no issues with that. Uh, I was no rush to get this particular pen. Uh, but now that it's here, I definitely want to test it out. So I'm going to ref I'm going to fill this one up. You know what? Uh, we'll just do it here live on camera, see how well this thing works. So I'm going to open up this back end and the converter is already installed. Let's shake up the bottle a little bit, making sure there's a good mix to it. Always make sure that you have some sort of underbacking uh, napkins and stuff like that because obviously this is not uh, particles of dust and stuff. This is actual ink splattering around. This is coming from the caps and whatnot. Uh, I'm assuming that we would dip this in and then we would turn to draw in the ink, this is a plunger inside there. So you would turn right to draw in the ink. And the best way to do any kind of fountain pen is to draw in the ink to the fill and hang it down overwards and slightly push the plunger back down uh, a slight quarter turn. So this will get the, the ink pressure going. Let's bring it back down to the bottom. Let's drop the pen inside. We'll slowly turn. And I'm seeing ink fill to the cartridge now it filled up about halfway so um hopefully it, uh, it looks like i dipped it all the way through so the issue was not necessarily again uh, the depth of it but that's about as much ink as i was able to actually pull into the pen which is a decent amount typically a fountain pen that's about average i'm going to close up the bottle we combine all the elements and the fact is that the 
the nib has now been saturated with ink already. New page. And we'll see how well this operates. And we'll be comparing this with a couple of these standardized felt tip pens as we hop up to the side. So first go. Feels pretty smooth. Speed of it as I continue to move faster and faster and faster. I need to keep up with my movements. Now of course the ink has been, I'm sorry, the uh, nib has been fully saturated with ink. The ink value, like the actual blackness of it, uh, feels okay. It has a slight gray to it. Being onyx, it should be pretty dark. Now I'm not sure if this ink is actually waterproof or not. Uh, I wasn't quite sure, it didn't tell me anything about that. Go to the back end, won't roll away. If I bring in another pen, the felt tips from the Fabric Castell. This one's a bit of a thinner line, but based on, as I even just put lines next to each other, usually I can kind of tell, uh, the camera might not necessarily tell you this, but from what I can tell right now, the ink does seem, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, it does seem to match fairly closely. Seems pretty close, pretty close. As it dries a little bit, the Euchre's ink has a slightly cooler ink to it. The Faber-Castell has a slight grayness to it, but it's more neutral, much more neutral. So the Onyx ink has a slight cool ink to it. People might like that, people may not. As I hold it to the paper, Saturation seems to be okay, so it's not bleeding into the paper as much. Let me zoom out again. It seems to hold well fast in terms of speed. Speed when it comes to pens are associated by how fast the ink moves out of the pen. Certain pens move slower for me, but the faster I move, the ink can't keep up with the flow, so it skips a lot. So this particular pen is not skipping so much, which is looking pretty good. Now these nibs are going to be standard and universal to all the pens you're using. So what I'm using right now, no matter what pen you're buying, is a nib that you'll be using. And now, honestly, this is actually the most important part of the construction. So, so far, be okay. And that's actually now draw something with a bit more detail. Paper over. Applying it towards just shapes and a bird. I'm trying to get a sense of how this pen feels so far. Let's just do the upper portion. Again, so far, it doesn't matter what the angle that I'm holding it from degree. Typically, some pens you like to hold it more vertical, 90 degree angles. As I'm holding it with a more, lot more uh, shallowness to it, it's only catching the edge of the felt tip or the uh, nib. And it still seems to produce a steady line. Of course, the, the downside of some of the felt tip pens is that based on the orientation of where it's being held, sometimes the flow is smooth. Sometimes, depending on how the metal is contacting the page, it might skip. It may not necessarily give you a smooth line. So far, I'm actually liking the way it feels. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. Pressure is being mostly put on by grip. So if you're gripping really tightly, putting a lot of pressure on top, you'll be digging into the paper. So with lighter pressure, the pen should have a longer lifespan. Because the question I have now is the one that we can't necessarily answer just yet, which is the lifespan of the nib. Now typically with the lifespan of these kind of felt tip pens, after heavy use, I would say, you know, um, 
in terms of number of drawings you can go for, I mean, especially when you go for full details like this one here, you could produce maybe upwards of like 15, 20 sketches and drawings. Um, and you're probably looking, you know, looking to use it on average time basis of a couple hours a day. Uh, it may last you within a two week period with everyday use. But again, like I said, that's pretty quick actually in terms of it running out. But that's if with heavy, heavy use. Now, with light use, and if you're you know easy on the pressure, those pens can last a lot, a lot, long, a lot longer. But here with the felt tip pen, uh, even if you're using light pressure, with speed and movement, the faster you move, then you start to get a bit more of this grinding from the paper. You start to actually shape the uh, the nib into angles, flatness to them, and so you can get variations in the way it ends up shaping and forming, which doesn't produce the same line. And uh, that can have a lot of downsides to it too. Because it might even create the action, tactile response on the paper that doesn't really feel very nice. But so far, it should hold up pretty well. But that is definitely always a downside. Buying one of these again to replace them, like I said, would be $5 in cost. The fact that they're not necessarily having any international uh, storefronts means you have to order directly from their site, which could take time to order in. So what you'd want to do is basically uh, buy in bulk and have them shipped to you. So you have a whole stock of them in case you need to go through. Now, thankfully, this is the only part you'd actually have to repurchase and replace. Uh, it would have been nice, much like how the Copic liners do have these end pieces, but even if the needle was replaceable, that would have been the most ideal. You can actually extract that uh, piece and replace it. As a sketching tool, of course, moving in multiple different directions, uh, you're able to still produce the consistent line. Uh, fountain pens, typically you want to move in the direction as the way the uh, nib is faced. So far, again, I think we have a pretty good pen going on over here. I was kind of approaching this towards being uh, non-biased, obviously. Euchers did not send me this pen. I purchased it with the intent of using it, but also to share with you guys my thoughts in, on the material and how it works so far. As I go into a little bit of the hatching, I have to see that, again, the pen so far is still working fairly well. Things like weight, and because of it being much lighter weight based on the material, uh, won't necessarily create a lot of pressure and also pain in some areas where it's being held. The diameter of the pen feels pretty standard to all these other ones as well too. It's slightly thicker, just by a little bit, so it feels comfortable. Some people with larger hands will probably like that. I think this kind of pen can be uh, applicable to any sketch artist, even people that are looking for just writing, note taking. Now, the one thing I have not tested just yet is this ink's ability to hold up to water. And we're going to bring in a brush pen over here uh, with some water inside there and see how well this will hold up. I'm going to wait till the ink dries a little bit after I do a little bit more of the drawing. So far, again, it's smooth. It feels smooth. The sound of it, too, as well. I, when I use certain pens, there are sounds that emanate from it based on how it feels on the paper. Now, the paper that I'm using right now is a Bristol paper. This is a much smoother surfacing. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure how well this will hold up to things like craft papers or tone papers that have a bit more uh, tooth and weight to it. And of course with this Bristol, it does write very smoothly. The sound has a typical scratchy, but not that's uncomfortable. Certain uh, felt tip pens have a harder nib to them. And so when they go on the surface of the paper, they have a very, very scratchy sound to the point where it feels a little bit uncomfortable and um, slightly irritating. Now this is the 1.0 that we're using at the moment, 1.0. So it feels, I would say in comparison of a Stedler, I would say not the three, it would be like the five. This size feels more like the five. For the Fabricastels, this is the XS. This feels like an F. So the excess produces a very thin line, as you see in comparison to size, very thin. The F size, or possibly even the M, is comparable to the 1.0, which is actually a decent weight of line. 
the 1.4 being thicker is a very heavy line. And speed seems to keep up. Create the interest of focus in here. So for the contrast, the dark feels pretty good. It has a slight gray to it as it dries out a little bit. As you can see, as you overlap more lines and lines, it has this overlapping uh, value where it goes. Some parts are dark, some parts are lighter. And I think this is just a, the drying period. I have a feeling this ink is not going to be very uh, waterproof. Let's see. Now the fresh parts that are still soaking into the paper, uh, it'll need time. I'm going to say at least a five minute period uh, for it to soak into the paper and dry enough where it might be able to handle some of the water on top. This is not also one for uh, water, but you might also want to try things like markers. Any kind of marker applied to these kinds of pens that don't have waterproof ink will still run and blur like crazy. You definitely don't want to use markers on top of things like Sharpie pens and permanent pens because the alcohol nature of the ink and the alcohol base of the marker will obviously interact and it reactivates that ink. Pushing a little bit of line weight around the forms. All right, we'll put this one down for the moment. Locks in pretty tightly, doesn't shake too much. It's a bit of a turn, feels solid. We're gonna bring in a water brush. This is just a regular brush. Uh, this is from a different company. And uh, I have water inside this handle. I'm able to squeeze it and water will come out. And we'll see if this will reactivate. Now we're just gonna go straight in because typically when I draw with ink pens like this, I, I go straight into the drawing with watercolor. Now I'm not using any watercolor right now to change image. We're doing a blotting test right now at the moment. No ink on the palm. A good way to test that as well too is just to kind of like just rub your hands across see if there's any smearing. No smearing right now at the moment, pressing harder onto it. So from here, let's test this out. And then I'm gonna do a couple of small areas and it does or reactivates that ink. And this is not a waterproof ink. Then the question is, if I'm gonna do things like ink washes and stuff like that, you know, would I wanna use something like this? Yeah, potentially, if you're doing washes. This will also reveal the, uh, the nature of the ink, which is whether it's gonna be more neutral, warm, or cool. This is much more of a cooler ink, I would say, compared to what I'm seeing on the camera. Um, however, if I wanted to use like a watercolor painting, this is not the kind of ink I'm gonna to wanna to use. I would probably turn to the Blackstone uh, as a waterproof ink. And so will those kinds of inks also useful or can be used with this kind of pen? It can be, because those are fountain, uh, fountain pen safe inks. So if you have fountain pen inks that are waterproof, do not use India inks. Do not use anything that's heavy pigment based. Uh, the other inks are pigment based, but they're formulated for fountain pens. So that's what you want to use. Now, this can have cool effects too, but like I said, now you also lose the actual line and hatching. Something like this to me is not something I typically do, but that is what happens when you put water on top of the sink. It's going on right now. Okay. So unless you're only going to be doing drawing, then you can leave it. You know, you can use this ink continually. Uh, for myself personally, I'll keep the ink but I won't be using it regularly. I'm gonna convert over to the waterproof inks that I have uh, because I've used a lot of watercolor stuff on my pieces. So, so far though, it does write well and the ink can make a slight difference. Water-based inks like this tend to be a bit silkier, uh, a bit smoother when it comes out. Some of the heavier inks like the pigment-based inks tend to be a bit more um, thicker in formula. So it doesn't produce sometimes a very smooth line. But being a, fel a felt-tip pen, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem at the moment. Testing out ellipses, pressure, speed, moving faster. Again, the speed is excellent. Putting a bit more pressure on top. The nib is not changing too much based on what I'm seeing right now. Putting a bit more pressure on top of this. But Oh, interesting. I don't know if you saw that. 
zoom in here real quickly. Focuses it a little bit. Hopefully you can still focus, focus. Searching, maybe it's too close. Now, I'm not sure if you can see very well, but right in this area here, there's a bit of splatter going on. Uh, this has to do with the, the nib catching a little bit and spraying some ink. So it's very saturated with ink right now. So as I draw with it, there are some areas like right there where it's spraying ink. So the nib is actually very soft. So it has a lot of give as you press harder into it. Pressing a bit harder now into this. It's not happening every time. It's not consistently doing it. But it does happen every now and again. It has a bit of a splatter, uh, which is not going to be the greatest thing for, for us. I'm looking for it when it turns. I like to beat up the pens a little bit and see how well they take up to pressure and movement. And if I break it, if I have to. I usually like to take apart the pens and kind of see how they work, but it's pretty typical as to like how most fountain pens are working. But nib is the, the number one key thing. If the nib can upkeep towards pressure, speed, and it's not breaking too much, and it's not spraying ink as much as I'm kind of seeing it right now, uh, if, if it sprayed a little bit, but it kept its shape, I'm constantly rotating the pen to see if I can find an area of skip. Doesn't seem to be the case. So that seems to be a slight one-off. I'm going to keep an eye on that in terms of what happens into the pens. Let me zoom out a little bit more. See from a distance. And you won't see that as a problem later on. Seems okay. Like I said, just be mindful of that. I would say uh, for your own comfort as well to test out these kinds of pens for yourself. Buy multiple nibs. See what happens with it. Just moving things around, just seeing how it feels. Feels pretty good. In terms of results of, of how I feel about this particular pen, uh, I would say first impression, I felt, you know, I mean, for $19, uh, it's not too bad. Uh, for a pen of the way it feels right now, I'd expect it to be a little bit less. I'm thinking about like the $10 range, $8 to $10 possibly, you know, because all you're then really paying for is just the casing. And the converter was not a part of it. The converter was an extra $3.30. The nib being $5 also, again, pretty high in cost. Now this is the shipping is standard flat with five bucks coming to the US. But this particular one is obviously a much thicker nib. I don't think we need to test it too much. It's probably gonna feel the same. It's just a much broader nib. It's gonna give you a much heavier line. Uh, this is the more standard size I think most people are gonna to wanna to get, the 1.0. Something 1.0 or thinner is what I would recommend for most people. The thicker the pen is gonna be harder to really balance out line range. But I think this one gives you a pretty good diversity, the pen. Moving just a little bit lighter with this as well too. Just catching the edge, holding it to the distance a bit further back, having more or less leverage. I'm not going to be pressing too hard. Same thing, moves well. Yeah, it feels pretty good. So what I recommend it. The fact that we can refill this with inks of various types, the nib feels smooth, seems to hold up the pressure. Ink-wise, I think for people that don't do a lot of watercolors, is okay. 
I'm not fond of the, the, the kind of the temperature of the ink. I like something more neutral or more grayish. If it was darker in value, great. But I think, again, like I said, it has a bit of a cooler ink to it, which I'm not too fond of, but I think it doesn't really matter for other people. But I think I could uh, for some people that wouldn't necessarily care about that aspect of it. Like I said, price point wise, does it compete with the other ones that are out here? Uh, for the Copic, I would say it's close. But it does have the benefit compared to the Copic where you can refill with the cartridge or the ink of your choice. So I think that has a huge benefit to it, which is where you're wasting a lot less material. Yes, these will be, need to be replaced at some point, at some time. They have to be. Uh, would, I, would I be looking for more of Euchre's innovations and different ways of approaching this reusable pen? Definitely. I'm always in the eyes and lines of sight as to like how other ways can be approached for something like this. Less wasteful plastics and stuff like that. I don't really buy pens like these anymore uh, because the one-off plastic is not recyclable as you know where they can't be reusing the actual materials for manufacturing so i don't really purchase those I, I use them mainly for demo instructions and also talking about how the pens work and for comparison but i don't personally purchase them for personal use at all uh, so this would be more of a personal use pen and i'll be using it for classes and whatnot and i'm going to continue using it and hopefully at some point if i'm able to actually even produce uh or purchase you know, further, you know, products from this brand, I can do another kind of slight review and kind of give you comparisons of thoughts. But so far, it seems to handle quite nicely. 19 bucks, again, for me, it's not bad. Uh, for the student, you know, are they going to want to willing to spend something like this, even if it is, what, $19, $20? Overall, again, with the converter and also with different size, maybe back up if you're spending above, you know, 35 40 bucks. Uh, or a singular writing tool for some people it might be out of their price range but like i said i've also spent quite a bit on fountain pens as well too and fountain pens i'm willing to invest on because these are more luxury and pieces there's a lot more collectability about it uh, for it and of course there's a little bit more uh, customization that can happen as well too and um this one still needs a bit of ink but this one is a very good plug and play kind of pen and if you do go with something a bit more on, on a higher premium for the actual materials being used for the casing, I don't know, I don't think that's a bad idea, but for the low risk approach, you know, I wouldn't mind even just having people starting off with the baseline, the youth range. Because I don't see a pen like this as being more of a collectible piece. I see it as being a more functional piece that I can, you know, use day to day. The fountain pens I like to use, you know, every now and again, um, I use it for you know, my own personal satisfaction. I don't really ever take those kind of, kind of pens to classes a lot. I don't use them for demo purposes often, but they're more for just personal, you know, interest. But this kind of pen would be like a workhorse uh, where I'll put a lot of strain into it. And it seems all right. Well, more than all right. I think it's very, very usable. Uh, very user-friendly, with the right ink, with the right pressure, being mindful of the nib, it can go a long way. So this is the Euchre's Youth Range Baseline Pen, and um, Euchre's, I'll put up the links below on the description, uh, also the different kind of uh, the uh, accessories that I purchased for the pen. And so far I would say, first impression, this is the very first time I'm using this pen, is definitely positive. First reaction to the pen opening it was so-so, but after using it, it feels smooth. I think it could be very functional for my everyday use. Uh, changing out the ink would be a must for me. Uh, I might do another couple of pieces and post it on my Instagram, which again, like I said, I'll post up links and things where you can find additional demos and drawings that I'll post up. Uh, but if anybody has any comments, you know, place them down below in terms of if you've used pens like this before, Euchre's, let me know what you think. You know, uh, did you like it? Did you not like it? What particular model did you buy? Uh, did you have any criticism based on prolonged use? Working with the company though was great. They were very communicative, uh, very helpful. Based on, you know, things were out of stock, they kind of let me know what was going on, if they needed a refund or if I could wait. And so the communication was solid. And um, the company as a brand seems to be pretty good about their marketing, social media. And you are getting exactly what you're paying for. So what they're touting as a brand and touting as a product is exactly what it is. So you can't knock that. And I think it works really great for that, uh, for that aspect. So for someone who's looking for a reusable felt tip pen, felt tip pen, uh, as there are a couple other brands out there that do offer competition, I would say this is a very solid 
entry towards that uh, model of type. And I think more into the future, I hope pens like this will be created. Uh, more competition can only help in terms of different variations, but also cost, cost effectiveness. Uh, something like this can be obviously difficult to, well, not difficult to manufacture, but because of the amount of sales, uh, the pricing does go up. It may not produce as much maybe as call of orders. But as more people kind of decide to these kind of pens, uh, we might see a drop within cost and price points, which I hope so as well too, because I do uh, look for more of this type of reusable material, and a tool set that is. So if anybody has, like I said, has any comments or even suggestions of other things that you'd like me to take a look at, uh, please do let me know, especially with like writing tools and drawing tools. And uh, we'll talk to you again next time. So thank you again for joining on Peter Han style for the YouTube channel for reviews of pens. I'll be doing some additional um, reviews in the future real soon as well too. I have some other pens that I've actually gotten in, in stock uh, to test them out. And of course, I'll also be doing hopefully more uh, updates towards live feeds every now and ago. I, I won't be posting full live feeds, but maybe small chunks here and there. And hopefully more interviews in the future as well too of other artists. But for the ink review and pen reviews, uh, this will be added to that collection. So look up to that playlist and uh, let me know of any other comments you might have. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. See you guys next time.